All right, um, these videos are for uh, my trig uh, pre-cal students. Um, this is crazy that this is going on while we're right in the middle of this chapter. So, here's what you should know. You should know these um, reciprocal functions. Um, you should know that sine theta is equal to 1 over cosecant theta. You should know cosine theta is equal to 1 over secant theta. You should know tangent theta is equal to 1 over cotangent theta. You should know cotangent theta is equal to 1 over tan. You should know secant is 1 over cosecant. You should know that cosecant is 1 over sine. Okay? Also, we know that tangent is equal to sine over cosine. And cotangent is uh, cosine over sine. Okay, you've got to know those. You have to know the Pythag Pythagorean identity. You have to know that um, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta is equal to 1. So then we know that sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cosine squared theta. And we know that cosine squared theta is equal to 1 minus sine squared theta. Okay. We also know that 1 plus cotangent squared, let's say theta, we can use x or theta, it doesn't matter, is equal to cosecant squared theta. Now you're going to remember that cotangent goes with cosecant because they both start with c. Alright, and then we're going to say that 1 is equal to cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta. And that uh, cotangent squared theta is equal to co cosecant squared theta minus 1. All right, I'll try and write real small here. We have 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to, well, what's left? Well, sine, cosine, cotangent, cosecant, tangent. We're going to say that this is secant squared theta. So then we're going to say 1 is equal to secant squared theta minus tangent squared theta. And we're going to say that uh, tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta minus 1. Okay, staggering identities. Next, you've got sum and difference. You have the sum and difference identities. Where you have sine x plus y is equal to sine of x times cosine of y plus yep, cosine of x 
times sine of y. You have sine x minus y. This is equal to the sine. It's the only thing that changes here. Sine of x cosine of y minus cosine of x sine of y. All right, so suppose, well, we'll get it there in a second. We have cosine of x plus y, and we have cosine of x minus y. Cosine of x plus y is going to be cosine of x times the cosine of y minus the sine of x times the sine of y. This is going to be, notice it's cosine, cosine, sine, sine, but the sine changes from our original problem. So what's on the left is opposite than what's here on the right. So this is going to be cosine x times cosine y plus sine x sine y. And now suppose, let's talk about how these work real quick. Suppose I want to know what is the sine of um, 45 plus 120, okay? So we're going to use this top equation. We're going to say the sine of 45 times the cosine of 120 plus the cosine of 45 times the sine of 120. Okay, well, the sine of 45 is going to be the square root of 2 over 2. The cosine of 120 is going to be um, 1 half. Plus, the cosine of 45 is the square root of 2 over 2. And the sine of 120 is going to be the square root of 3 over 2. So we're going to say, well, that's the square root of 2 times 1 is the square root of 2, and this is the square root of 6. So we're going to say the square root of 2 plus the square root of 6. This is 4. This is the square root of 2 over 4 plus the square root of 6 over 4. My denominator is 4. That's going to be my answer. We're looking for the exact value of the sine of x plus y. All right, and we're just going to go through all the formulas that y'all are going to need, okay? And then I will go back and, and I'll try to give you an example of each one as I go along here. Um, you're going to need co-function identities. These are pretty easy. Um... So we know that a triangle has 180 degrees. A triangle has 180 degrees as the sum of the interior angles. also know um, there is one right angle and the other two angles are complementary. Meaning Angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 90 degrees. Okay? 
So the sine of pi over 2 minus what the other angle is, is what are you doing, cat? Stop it. Is equal to the cosine of x. So we're saying that the sine of 90, the sine of 90 minus 50, well, let's change this number to something we can, we know. Let's say the sine of, um, let's say make this 60, is equal to the cosine of 60. So we're really saying that the sine of 30 is equal to the cosine of 60. Well, the sine of 30 is 1 half. And the cosine of 60 is equal to 1 half. Okay, notice how these add up to 90 degrees. So we could actually say, here let's move over to this board right here. Let's. So I could say that the sine of 38 degrees is equal to the cosine of, um, well, 90 minus 90 minus 38 is equal to 52. That's 90 degrees. These two are equal to each other. Okay. And these go in pairs. So the tangent of 38 would be equal to the cotangent of 52. The secant of 38 is equal to the cosecant of 52. Now we could change these numbers. I mean, we could make this, we could make this 10, and we could make this 80. Okay, this is pi over 2 minus x. Okay, that's 90 minus whatever the other angle is. We can say this is x. 90 minus x, there we go. And, and this is 10. This is 80. Let's say we want to go the other way. Let's say this is 10. Then this would have to be 80. They have to add up to 90 degrees. What are you doing? Come here. I have two cats, Sassy and Fred. They are helping me make these videos. If I can catch one, I'll show them to you. All right. Um, what's next? Double angle identities. Let me move my camera back over here. So we have these things called double angle identities. And the way these work is the sine of 2x is equal to 2 sine of x cosine of x. Um, we have the cosine of 2x is equal to cosine squared x minus sine squared x 
which is the same thing as saying 1 minus 2 sine squared x and is also equal to 2 cosine squared x minus 1. Then we have the tangent of 2x is equal to 2 tangent x over 1 minus tangent squared x. Double angle identities. Um, so suppose we wanted to find um, what is the cotangent of let's say 120. Well this is equal to the cosine of 2 times 60. Okay so 60 is our x that we're talking about. So we're going to say that the cosine of 60 squared minus the sine of 60 squared is going to be equal to what the cosine of 120 is. Okay, so the cosine of 60, if we think about this, this is 1 half. We're going to square that minus the sine of 60 is the square root of 3 over 2. We're going to square that. So this is going to be 1 fourth minus 3 fourths. Well, 1 minus 3 is negative 2. So this is going to be negative 2 fourths. And negative 2 fourths is equal to negative 1 half. Okay, so we're saying that the cosine of 120 is equal to negative 1 half. So if we think about our unit circle, and we're right there, the cosine of 120, this is in the second quadrant. The cosine, or our x value, is in the negative quadrant right here. This is going to be negative 1 half. It's going to be right there. Okay, so that checks out right. And that this is how you use this. I mean, yes, you could probably just put this in a calculator and find the answer. But maybe this isn't a calculator test that I give you also. Hold on a second. <laughs> this is sassy. She doesn't want to, but she's kind of shy. She is the nosiest cat in the world. Hey! <laughs> um, Alright, next. We use half angle identities. that this is a lot this would be a, a whole chunk of too much stuff if this was just an hour in my classroom but since it's on here you can sit there and rewind it and go back and use your book and go through problems and use my labs plus to help you understand sort of what's going on with everything this way you have it right here in front of you all right um we have the sine of x divided by 2 
is equal to plus and minus 1 minus the cosine of x divided by 2. We have the cosine of x divided by 2. Notice this is half angle. We're taking an angle and we're dividing it by 2. Is equal to plus and minus 1 plus the cosine of x divided by 2. This bracket, or this radical goes all the way down through the denominator. Okay. Then we also have the tangent of x divided by 2 is equal to plus and minus. Guess what this is going to be? Sine over cosine. 1 minus cosine x over 1 plus cosine x. Don't forget, we're trying to find the exact values of what these values are going to be. Let me, let me put that there. So suppose I'm looking for, let's start off with something easy first. Let's say I'm looking for the sine of 60. Okay, I want to know what the sine of 60 is. Well, that's going to be 120 divided by 2. Okay. So that's 120 divided by 2. 120 divided by 2 is 60. So I'm going to say 1 minus the cosine of 120 divided by 2. Hold on. Um, so... This is going to be 1 minus the cosine of 120 we just found is negative 1 half, okay, divided by 2. So this is really 1 plus 1 half, okay. 1 plus 1 half is really 3 halves, right? So we're going to make this 3 halves over 2. This means I'm going to have two fractions. Okay, so I'm going to say 3 halves times 1 over 2. So this is going to be 3 over 4. Okay, well we're still talking the square root of everything, right? So this is the square root of 3 and the square root of 4 is 2. So my answer is the square root of 3 over 2. So this is the sine of 60, because it's 120 over 2. So we're saying that the sine of 60 is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Well, that's, that's true. Okay. And, and... I've provided many other examples in our homeworks for these. All right. So these are the formulas I'm asking you to remember. Okay. Solving tree equations. Now we're going to take all these and we're going to mash them all up and put them in proving trig identities, which I will have on a different video for you.